Hey MTV, welcome to my kitchen. Oh my gosh, that is so good. Man! Hey guys, it's Bailey and Sam, and tonight we're gonna be showing you guys how to make some gluten-free bread. Yeah, so I have celiac disease, and when Sam met me, um, he's been really good about making me gluten-free bread and all kinds of yummy dishes. Um, so when we went to Italy, we realized that every bread we've ever had here was not in comparison. It was so good there. Yeah, so when we got back, I made it my kind of mission to be able to replicate the bread that we made in uh, Italy or tasted in Italy. So uh, did some research, found a amazing Italian gluten-free flour blend, and then learned how to make some bread with it. And so we are going to show you guys how to do that tonight. And your finished product, if you're lucky, could look like that. So good! Let's get cooking good looking. <laughs> First thing, now that we've got all of our ingredients lined out, is we are going to measure everything out. Uh, it's really important in a lot of normal baking recipes, you see everything listed out like with volume, so like a quarter cup of this, half cup of that. In order to get the most accurate representation of your ingredients, you're actually going to need to weigh things out. So if you have a kitchen scale, would absolutely recommend getting one of those out. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and grab mine and weigh out all the ingredients. The recipe that I like to do for this is kind of just a modified version of the ingredients or the recipe that they have on the bag for focaccia. Um, typically when I'm making like a gluten-free loaf, I like to use a little bit less water than what they recommend here just because you don't want it to be too hydrated, otherwise it's not going to stick in a ball like you, uh, you would want a normal loaf to be. And there's no gluten obviously, so uh, nothing's going to hold it all together whenever you try to mix it in and put it into a bowl. So recipe calls for a thousand grams of the Fiori glue flour, which just happens to be exactly one of these bags. And then instead of doing 950 grams of water, I'm going to do uh, 900 or 850 grams. And uh, that's kind of the, f I've done 900, I've done 800, 850 seems to work uh, the best. And so I just use tap water. Uh, you can use filtered water. I like to get it a little bit warm because we're going to put the yeast into this in a second. And you want it to be warm just so it activates a little bit better and gets the yeast fermenting and bubbling and all that good stuff. So once you get your water measured out, you want to go ahead and pour it right into the mixing bowl that you're going to be using. We're going to be using our KitchenAid stand mixer, so I'm just going to go ahead and put it in there. Um, Christmas gift to me. <laughs> uh, set that aside, and the next thing we're going to want to do is measure out our yeast. So now that we've got our yeast measured out, we're going to go ahead and get that in the water so we can get it all nice and activated. You can already see it starting to foam up a little bit. That's because the water is a little warm. Give it a good stir until everything is all nice and incorporated. Okay, now that we've got our yeast getting activated with the warm water, we're gonna go ahead and measure out our final two ingredients other than, of course, the flour. Um, so first is olive oil. This recipe requires 50 grams of olive oil, which is uh, a good amount. However, it's gonna provide a lot of really great flavor and, um, Trust me when I say that this recipe is really sticky, so you're gonna to wanna to keep some extra olive oil on hand as well to help you clean off the dough hook attachment. Uh, you wanna put some on your hands whenever you're getting ready to work the dough, but it's gonna add a lot of great flavor. Uh, it's an Italian recipe. What would be an Italian recipe without a mother load of uh, olive oil? Um, <laughs> they'll tell you it's for the omega-3s, but it's, uh, it's for the flavor, come on. And last but not least, we're going to add a good bit of salt to this recipe, 35 grams to be exact, which is a pretty good amount of salt. I'm just using normal kosher salt for this. Um, you can use sea salt. I wouldn't recommend doing ionized uh, table salt or anything like that. Um, but this is going to give the bread a really great salty flavor. And fun fact, something that we learned while we were on our honeymoon in Italy was that in Tuscany, they actually don't salt their bread. Uh, I forget the exact reason why, but I remember that the person who, the American who led the training that we went to for uh, uh, cooking class that my beautiful wife got me for my birthday <laughs> last year, 
uh, seemed to have a lot of take a lot of chagrin with that. It was because when they started making the how do you say it for kacha? Yeah. You, yeah, yeah, focaccia. Yeah, when they started making that, um, it was during a time of poverty and salt was expensive. Oh, right, yeah. And so they wouldn't use it. Wow, look at my memory. It's never as That's, good as you. This is the first time that she's remembered something. <laughs> that it, 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 when I say that, I mean like a, a fun fact. It's Another fun. really quick fun fact about olive oil. When we were there, we were laughing so hard because the, the old Italian woman who was teaching our cooking class, she just kept pouring more olive oil Seriously. in. Like, they, I mean, when you say a lot, I mean like it was this much for like a single tomato sauce. Yeah, she just kept nice. pouring. It was hysterical. But it was delicious. It was so really good. You can't really argue with the technique. All right, so for this, we're gonna go ahead and use the bread hook attachment. We're really not gonna be doing a whole lot of like traditional kneading, but I've tried it with like paddles and other things like that, and the bread hook still works the best. So let's go ahead and get that in. Take our yeast and water mixture that has just been sitting here fermenting for the past few minutes. It's getting nice and bubbly for us so that yeast is good to activate it. Lock in the bowl. And then what I'm gonna do here is actually pour in about half of the bread mixture. You can do it all in one go, but my experience has been that with this Caputo Fiore Glute Flour, it mixes a lot better uh, if you do it in uh, two batches instead of just one. He's tested this a lot to find the perfect recipe. Yeah, so. so I, I love my wife and I want to have the bread. <laughs> and I love the bread, so win-win. So, yep. So with this, you don't have to be as exact as we were being before when we're pouring it in, but yeah, it's about half. It smells really good. If you guys want to get a good whiff of that, it smells amazing, <laughs> actually. It smells like bread. Um, and so now, we're gonna go ahead and lower this in, uh, lock it in, and then get started on a very low speed. It's all just gonna start kind of mixing things together. And then we're gonna go in and start adding our salt in slowly, a little bit at a time in different areas. Now that our salt is added to the mixture, we're gonna go ahead and start slowly drizzling the olive oil. Uh, just a little bit of a time, so everything gets nice and, and incorporated. And I'm gonna go ahead and speed it up just a tad. Okay. Um, so we're gonna go ahead and get this mixed up a little bit more, just to incorporate that olive oil in there. And now that everything is kind of come together and is a little bit homogenized, we're gonna go ahead and cut off the mixer, uh, unlock it. You can see that it's, it's very wet still. That's because we still have a, another half of the bag to go as far as flour goes. Um, so we're gonna put this in here and let it finish up on a medium low speed. Okay, now you can see that it is all coming together all nice. So what we're gonna do is increase the speed from like two to four. And we're just gonna let this bad boy run, maybe dance a little bit and uh, have a good time. Uh, we're gonna wait for the clock to hit about four minutes and come back and check on this and then we should be good to let it rise. It already smells good. It does smell really good. Just... All right, so now we're going to shut it off. Shut it off all the way. Uh, take the bread hook out. You're probably gonna need to scoop some of this down. I recommend getting a little bit of olive oil on your hands to do so. And then cover it up with plastic wrap and then let it rise for about one to two hours in a nice draft-free environment until it doubles in size. All right, so while we have our dough resting and rising, uh, if you could go ahead and preheat your oven to 425 degrees and then take your cooking vessel, which in this case is gonna be our four quart uh, Dutch oven, go ahead and slide that in while you're preheating. You want this to be preheated with your oven for around an hour so you have a really nice hot environment when you put your dough into. That's what's gonna give it that great crust and that's what's gonna give it that awesome crunch that- Which is something that people with celiac know when you buy gluten-free bread at the store, it doesn't exist. Yeah. You're gonna put a really good amount of oil on your hands. Rub it all over both, okay? Until you have a nice, really shimmery amount. And then, just slowly start grabbing it and really get in there. And 
getting, like I said, around about half. Drop it into our preheated oven. Okay. You can hear it sizzling. Spin it around so it gets oil on the bottom there. That'll help give it a nice crust. Just do a little bit more of a shape. You can push it out some. All right, so the last thing we're gonna do before we put it in the oven is we're gonna score it so that this makes it look really pretty whenever it comes out of the oven and so it breaks where we want it to. You don't wanna do too much with this. Uh, typically, I just do like a kind of a, a square here. And this is gonna look really cool whenever it comes out of the oven. And give it that nice artisanal crust. Okay. All right, and into a 425 degree oven for 30 minutes covered, and then another 15 to 30 minutes uncovered until you get the crust that you want. All right, so this guy's done. It smells incredible in here. I cannot wait to show you guys. Ta-da! Oh my gosh, it looks so good. It smells great, it looks good, and if you do the old like flick test or the knock test, you can hear that nice hollow sound there. It lets you know that it's cooked all the way through, and yeah, gotta let this thing cool before we cut into it, but uh, Really excited to see how it tastes. All right, so for the moment of truth, we're gonna cut into this bad boy. And then I'm gonna eat it. <laughs> yeah, hear that nice crust. Mm. Look at that. You got lots of gray crumb in there. The air bubbles from that yeast. It almost looks like gluten. It's even stretchy. And I'm gonna go ahead and feed this. Ah! How does it taste? So good. Babe, this turned out so good. I'm glad you like it, sweetie. So you use this for a lot of other things, right? Yeah, and if you guys are interested and want to learn how to take this same dough and form it into amazing gluten-free pizza, just uh, let us know, leave a, a uh, comment down below, and uh, we will absolutely show you guys how to do that. And even if you don't eat gluten-free, all my family loves it, um, but if you're interested, he makes, well, I've never eaten it, but everyone says he makes great gluten-filled bread. Extra so, gluten. yeah. Anyways, thanks for watching, and we hope you enjoy. If you do try the recipe, let us know, because that'll make him happy. Don't forget, click the like and uh, subscribe. That's his thing. Okay, bye guys. Bye.